is several women request a brief discussion of the animus. How can we translate what men are saying about the anima into our animus? I think the best thing is not to translate, but to try to experience it directly. And I would say, how we experience, how, or I'd rather say, how I experienced the animus first. Uh, before knowing that there is such a thing as the animus, I just uh, was sure that I was one person who had all sorts of uh, holy convictions, and uh, which I felt were completely my own. And also all sorts of, in my case, skeptical thoughts about uh, distrustful thoughts about uh, human beings, about uh, reality, about so on. Uh, of which I would have also said they are all really my own. And uh, only when I entered analysis, I first recognized the animus in that form that uh, I dreamt about negative men and positive men, and Jung pointed out to me that they personified, so to speak, these parts in me. And then I, for the first time, uh, through these, per re realizing these, seeing these personifications in the dream, I began to wonder if these different convictions and attitudes I had were really mine, or uh, if I, if I would wanted really to identify with them. And furthermore, I noticed that whenever I identified with uh, certain of these attitudes, I got on the nerves of men, not only on Jung's nerves, but any man will do, as long as he's virile, uh, as long as he's not effeminate. Then uh, men automatically bristle. And uh, that made me thoughtful. And then I... <laughs> And that showed me then the two things together, that generally when I had identified with one of those personifications in my unconscious, who appeared personified in my dreams, uh, then I got on, on men's nerves. And uh, if you put that all together, then you see that is about empirically what the animus amounts to. That's why Jung says it is absolutely for a woman vitally important to have relationships to the other sex, for men too, to recognize the anima, because it's the simplest way of becoming aware uh, that the men uh, are very friendly towards you and open and has a nice conversation and suddenly they close up and bristle. And then you must always ask yourself, now, now what's wrong there? Am I not quite myself in that moment? Now it can be that one has also uh, an insight or a conviction or an attitude, uh, or one is sure, one, one ought or wants to do something, and the men bristle, uh, and it is not the animus. Because naturally, men do not only dislike the animus in a woman, but sometimes also, for certain reason, unknown reasons, dislike something of her genuine nature. It, but it is not so frequent, but it can happen. Uh, I've often seen, in, in, when analyzing a woman, that sometimes she had her true, she expressed to her husband her true inner self, her feminine self, and in spite of it, he, having learned psychology, say, oh, you are in the animus, and so on, when it wasn't. So there one can only uh, recur to one's dreams in such cases. Then the dreams uh, confirmed to the woman that she was on the right track and her husband, for some unknown reasons, was rejecting, or for, from out of personal complexes, was rejecting whatever she wanted to do or said or did. But even then, the great danger is that if uh, in such a situation one then gets into the animus in other way, in other way, one gets argu argumentative uh, and, and wants to prove one's point and wants to press one's point. Uh, and I would say whenever I recognize myself being in the animus, A, when I get on men's nerves, secondly, when I can't let a theme go, when I kind of possess, when I can't uh, say, well, let's agree to differ, uh, let's drop the discussion, never mind. Uh, when I kind of get hooked into having to argue the truth out. That is always a, a symptom of the anim being possessed by the animus. Uh, now, you must think also that the animus being, that is describing more the negative aspect of the animus, but the positive aspect is also there, and then it is uh, 
the invitation from the unconscious to from time to time act like a man, which can for a woman be uh, sometimes of very great help. I remember that when I wanted to buy a bit of land and ha had very little money, I had to give my last money to buy this, this bit of land. And so after having made the contract and everything ready, I, I, I just got the jitters. And I began to imagine I'm not insured. If I now get ill, if I can't earn, then I'm bankrupt. And you know, the whole, as one does in sleepless nights. And in that night, I dreamt that I was standing on the high mountains of the Valis on one side of the Valis Valley, and uh, which is a, about 200 kilometers uh, broad. And from the other side, from the Mont Blanc side, I saw a black speck coming through the air. And I looked at it and thought, is that a bird? It's rather big for a bird. And then it came closer and closer. And when it came, after about 10 minutes, it be I began to see that it was a, a skier. A skier who jumped, who jumped 200 kilometers over the whole valley. So he would have won in Sapporo. And <laughs> when he came closer, he came through the air and just landed beside me with an elegant Christiania. And I looked at him in admiration and, and said, Oh my God, how do you do that? And there I saw he was a simple peasant boy with a, uh, who grinned at me in a friendly manner and said, uh, quite simple, shut your eyes and jump. <laughs> <laughs> now you see, I took the hint and I said to myself, shut your eyes and jump and just sign the contract. Though I was shivering in my boots. Now there I let the animus be poss possessing me. I mean, it was an animus act. But I let it possess me because I thought uh, this was a positive figure of me and he was compensating my feminine uh, tendency to be anxious and afraid. And uh, therefore, I accepted the suggestion. So you see, the animus can uh, give a woman very positive qualities. We mustn't think of the animus as something ne only negative. One can, it gives one the courage to do things that one's feminine nature trembles to do. But it is, again, a question, as it was touched this morning, to discern the spirit, who is who, and, and to have it out with these inner figures, and to make up your mind. I made up my mind quite consciously, now I'm going to follow this peasant boy, uh, because uh, I felt uh, he, he was something in me which had this kind of blind nature colored, uh, courage, and I felt this, uh, from looking at the figure in the dream, he was a kind of healthy peasant. And so I said yes to him and incorporated him. That was still animus, but uh, so you, that is the problem with the animus. We have to, but we should never be identical. We, we should always know it is a part within oneself and then morally decide yes or no, and shall I let it act through me or realize itself through me, or shall I in certain other situations say no, and this is too much? Uh, I knew, uh, I understood the dream naturally, uh, uh, mainly as a compensation, that I was in this moment, in a way, negatively too feminine, too uh, dependent, anxious, not courageous enough to take a lonely step. And uh, that, that's about what I would like to say about this question. <laughs>